Um, I actually grew up macrobiotic. Uh, my parents got really involved uh, in macrobiotics in their 20s. My mother lived in the study house in Boston, and they were both in chiropractic school. They grew up very traditional American, um, like, like meat, potatoes, only white bread, and I think through their own exploration, they got uh, they were really struck by the philosophy, especially behind macrobiotics. I think a lot of the food was totally different than anything they'd ever seen before. So um, I know that my mom actually is, is not really the cook. My dad knows how to cook pretty well, but my mom was like, very into the pressure cooker, and so that's what I remember most growing up, is like everything went in the pressure cooker, vegetables, rice, everything, and, and so we had, um, I had a lot of allergies growing up, I was like very environmentally sensitive, and so my mother, I remember her telling me that she was extremely particular about my diet, and uh, you, living in the study houses, she had a lot of tools from that, so I knew that she used them. I don't have extremely clear memories. Um, I know that like I was also homeschooled, so I was very sheltered. So I know that like I remember at the age of like eight, I like went out to a restaurant and they had uh, they had milk on the table, and I was like, "What's that?" And they were like, oh, "That's cow's milk," and I thought it was actually milk for the cow. So like I was, I was a totally macro kid. <laughs> I mean, like I lived on like hajiki and arame, like every seaweed. So that was that was my experience, and I don't think I had anything outside of that paradigm until about the age of eight or ten, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. um, so like aduki bean brownies and tofu and cream for special occasions only. Yeah. Um, didn't make me the most popular kid, but I was probably one of the more healthy kids. So, and then I left it for a while. I left it for actually a long while. Um, I went off when I went off to high school. Um, but it's interesting because even within those, my comfort foods still were the foods that I grew up with. So like a lot of my friends, like, you know, when they miss home or they want a comfort food, they like reach out for like mashed potatoes or macaroni and cheese and I'm like where's the miso soup and the mochi so it's it's very it's I mean it's been a great process for me and some of my favorite foods are still what would be considered macro foods but I think a lot of what I was also raised with was the whole the whole practice behind it my mom always talks about the energy behind food so did my dad and so now I work as a chef and it's so interesting because so many chefs are so angry and intense in the kitchen. There's like a very, like, because it's a very fast-paced job, things have to get done. So for me, it's, it's been this, it was really challenging at first to work in a, work in a commercial kitchen. I like bust volume for like hundreds of people. Um, at first I was like, I was like, there's so much like anger and tension. I remember stories of like Nietzsche going to eat a meal and then like eating a carrot and being like, the cook was clearly having, you know, a bad day. So I was like, I always was like afraid I was going to get one of those people. I was like, they're going to eat my food and they're going to know that I'm having a bad day. So I like, I, I remember like chanting like Sanskrit mantras. I was like, everybody just breathe around the food. And I have like, I have some people who work for me who like think I'm the biggest fruitcake on the planet, but it's great. Like it works out very well. So I think that. That, that was my exposure. I literally grew up with it, so I had no idea that there was anything else out there. And throughout like, my process, I went and studied nutrition, so now I know like, there's, I've studied raw food and veganism and people who do the paleo diet, you know, blood type diet. So I know there's a whole plethora of, like, yeah. of different choices out there, but I think for macrobiotics, for me, what, I, mean, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I, I follow any particular diet, but a lot of the ideas behind it and the ideas of balance are so useful even in planning menus or even in just like my daily life. Like I'm like, yeah, I definitely have a headache from too much sugar and if even if it's something as simple as like taking umeboshi plum, like there's still things that I kind of, uh, I do intuitively um, having grown up that way. So. so what kind of turns you off or what do you think turns people off? For macrobiotics? I think there's a couple of things. I think um, I know from uh, my, my experience, a lot of people didn't do well eating what they believed was a macrobiotic diet. So it got, I think it got kind of bastardized and, and it's kind of, um, I don't want to say this, it sounds right. It's, not that it's, tip, it's, it's very typical of people to, in a way, to kind of like latch on to something and think it's going to be the end all be all on the answers and they kind of want a simple way of understanding it. So I know a lot of people who just feel like, okay, so we eat 70% grains, we eat this much pro like this much beans, this much seaweed, this much soup, we have, and they try to kind of deal with it in a very like, um, almost like a percentage way as opposed to thinking of it as like a whole life approach and kind of like in, in balance and also listening to themselves. So I think that was a big thing. And I think some people just don't do well with a lot of grains. So, you know, I know, you know, a lot of men I know have lost, like lost way too much weight doing the diet in the way that they thought they were supposed to. So they were like emaciated and a lot of women got what they, I know what they call it, grain bellies in the macrobiotic community often. So they didn't do so well with 
But I think I think that's part of why it got kind of, and people were like, it's just weird food. But you know, for me, growing up with it, I didn't know it was weird food. I thought it was normal food. So. So what do you think about this new macrobiotics, which is kind of fusing a lot of ideas I, together? Yeah. No, I think it's really exciting because I think the, and I and I would say by no means am I an expert on macrobiotics at all. Um, I've read a lot about it. I grew up with it, but I, I would not say I'm an expert. I think the idea of Teaching people even just about balance. I think most people on this planet are so out of balance that if they even just begin to, to that would be so useful to begin to understand that and be able to use that those tools in their life and not only in their food but in all elements of their life. So whether it's like, you know, if they have like a very like you know tense desk job all day, if they go home at night, it's going to be like, it's it's totally makes sense that they would like crave alcohol or something sweet. So if you can help people understand that um, in a broader sense, I, I, that would be huge. Yeah. So. so about people, like young people and uh, people your age, how yes. do you think you can get them into this kind of healthy life? Well, young people, well, we tend to be very interested in um, what's it going to do for us. I think that's a very much like my generation kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's necessarily, and there's shifts. I think some people, like I think, I think tapping into first, I know for myself, something that's very important to me is that like, I understand that um, it's global impact. So I think like the there's also a part of the macrobiotic diet that's like very much, um, it's much more sustainable, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that piece of it. I think. I think young people also are interested, they're interested in like celebrity culture, they're interested in um, you know like flashiness, packaging, the way things are promoted and presented to them is very important. Um, and I think that you know the way that our culture is now, first of all, the internet is huge. Like almost everybody gets like a majority of the information through the internet, but also in very short bits of information. So it can't, like I know that a lot of, I mean, and you have to start where people are at. Like I know, like growing up, like I was like supposed to chew my food a hundred times. Now, if you told the told the average person they're gonna chew their food a hundred times, they're like you lose them at that. Like they would just like walk away. They'd be like a hundred times, really. So, I think it's about also starting where people are at and presenting them with like the benefits, like the health benefits, and also uh, the the studies. Like you know, there's a lot of studies that show about how it's you know help people have like a lot more energy and just a better life overall. So, what would you like to do in the future? Well, what things? You've got a passion for Oh my gosh, so much. I want, um, well, I'm, I love, I'm gonna go get my, I'm, I like to get my master's in nutrition. I did go to Joshua School IAN, and then I did go to Amory Colvin's uh, chef training program. Um, I work as a wellness director for a weight loss camp for kids right now, so I do a lot of work with um, children who have uh, adults that are on diabetes at the age of like nine, or they're on a lot of medications, and I think a lot of those medications and things that are being prescribed to them could can be completely obliterated and not needed with some actually basic, very small dietary changes. I mean, even if we just took out the processed dairy they were eating. So I, I really wanted that. I'm very passionate about writing. I love writing. So um, I love like curriculum design and doing stuff like that. So maybe definitely, maybe definitely that sounds silly. Definitely working with the school systems would be really, it's really important to me. I love cooking. I love, I love where I work and I love cooking. I like to incorporate that, but um, I see myself definitely most passionate about teaching. So I'll get my master's um, in the next couple of years and then go for my PhD and, and I like doing a lot of research based projects. So hopefully helping people live a healthier life. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.